This talk is on the elephant in the room application, or the blue elephant application for short. And uh, this talk is to get your feedback so I can enhance the user experience. During my university days, I helped find and develop Black Dog Tribe, which was successful in the sense that it got a lot of users very quickly. These users wanted a communication channel where they can talk privately with helpers and a means of uh, receiving or providing information. Black Dog Tribe provided this, but not in a very comprehensive way. In the Blue Elephant app, I'm bringing a lot of exciting services to the users, but I'm also keeping things incredibly simple. Here's the app. It's live. You can access it through this link, but it's only been built for presentation purposes only, and I'm going to give you a brief tour of the application now. The first tab takes you to Facebook. We have an elephant in the room profile set up, but the problem with it is it only allows you a certain number of friends. The only real solution within Facebook itself is to create a Facebook page. Now Facebook is great because we all have one, and the page is great for hanging out, meeting people, and you can access applications that can sit on the page itself. Because everyone has access to Facebook, events happening in the, in the offline world and available to everyone should be hosted through Facebook or some plug-in equivalent. I'm fascinated about merging the online world with the offline world. And I also work at Hackspace, which does a lot of things with RFID chips. It wouldn't be too infeasible to create chips that reflect users' moods using different colors of LED, and also the RFID can be used to check in to, to these events. Anyway, going back to the app, the big problem with Facebook is that it's not secure or confidential. Anyone from anywhere can come in and read what you have to say. For sensitive or private conversations, I recommend we use Google, because it's better at confidentiality. I've created this Google page but I'm not logged in and I can't see any user activity. As a user or an admin, there's a wealth of privacy options available. Because it's so private, it's a great meeting spot for mind helpers and people who need help. The next tab in the app is a Google tab and it takes you to five groups I've set up. Each Google group goes to a Google page. You can either join on the page or join within the app because I'll embed these badges. So it's really simple to follow or unfollow a uh, Google group. Google Plus functions a lot like Facebook, but it also offers a lot of features that really benefit small groups of people. For instance, Google Hangout lets nine people talk face to face at one time. You can privately save these Hangouts as videos and they'll be privately held on the Google page for reference later. On blackdogtribe.com we had a lot of experts speak like a TED talk sort of scenario. Google offers a platform where, in a, say, a Q&A session, users can watch the video live and also ask questions to the lecturer directly. Of course, this is only for small groups. Uh, there are plenty of alternatives for the masses that sit on Facebook. To conclude, Facebook is better for the general masses, for hanging out and getting to know what's on the site. And Google is better for private groups. And the features it offers really complements that. There are some really interesting things you can do with the small group space. Here I've done something called Be Creative. And it's effectively a user-generated content channel. Be Creative is a library of albums, and these albums can be created for almost any scenario. This one I mocked up for the Google group, Can't Get Out of Betters. Users can write articles, upload pictures, or embed videos. It's a means of expressing themselves and providing content for a community. I recommend giving each user their own album so they have their own creative space, and they can share work to group albums like these. These albums could work really well in Google Hangout, because people can review how they felt or what they were thinking in a particular time in the week. Here are links that take you to particular parts of the Mind website so users can find the nearest therapy sessions in their area, the history of the Blue Elephant app, and uh, how to contact us. There's a Get Started widget that acts as a tour to integrate new users into the website so they're not lost. Even though this is just the beginning schematics, you can see that we've set up two appropriate lines of communication and there's plenty of scope for more innovation. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments box below. Thanks.